All right, hello and welcome to this episode where we're going to talk about handling triggering people. And so it should be exciting. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Cotty, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the creator of the AAA Response. Um, if you're looking for help and guidance on your journey of breaking free from OCD and anxiety and really reclaiming your life, please check out the links below or head over to restoredminds.com and connect with us. We have a lot of resources for you and can um, you know, really guide you on that journey and really teach you the skills that you need to be successful. Um, also, if you could help us out real quick by liking, subscribing, as well as leaving a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify, I would appreciate it as it helps the show very much. With all that said, uh, let's dive in. So in the last episode, we talked about the idea of you know tips for handling the stress of the holidays. Today, I want to um, you know really dive in more to one of the things we talked about, which was triggers, and specifically, I want to talk about this idea of triggering people and really how to go about that and and what that means, and you know just some different perspectives on this right so a lot of times when we handle when we have someone that's that's triggering in our life quote unquote i mean there there are such things as people who are you know just transparently just in the lower states of energy they're they're jerks they don't treat us well for whatever reason um this isn't necessarily what i'm talking about like sometimes there are just toxic people that we need to remove from our life you know or we need to set better boundaries with need to kind of create distance from all that stuff. Okay. All that is well and good. It's healthy. It's, it's important. And so this is not just about, so this is more applying to, you know, in the holidays, oftentimes we're going to see family members that we haven't seen in a long time or people that we haven't seen in a long time. And a lot of times we might find that these events are quote unquote triggering. You might be in a conversation with someone uh, that you haven't seen in three years or whatever. And all of a sudden this flood of emotion starts up and we perceive oftentimes that these people are the cause, right? That's our thought anyway. It's like, well, I felt this when I was talking to this person, so they caused me to feel this way. In almost in every situation, that's actually not true. Um, some, sometimes they might have said something that that pissed you off, or you know, really got a got a good reaction of you. But a lot of times we're bringing past emotion or stored emotion into our um, in our bodies into the experience itself so when something is really triggering the the question we always want to ask ourselves is okay like is everyone having the same exact experience you know i can think um back to a time when i was working with someone who was very triggered by chick-fil-a signs and their thought was uh, you know, that I need to t- like contact Chick-fil-A and tell them to take down their signs or like tell them to take down their marketing. Number one, that's not going to work. Uh, I mean, that's just the obvious. But number two, I kind of was like, okay, well, like, let's, let's think about that. Like, is it really the sign that's the problem? Is it really the sign that's the cause of this trigger? Because a lot of times when we understand this, it can really help us start to work at the trigger, quote unquote, from the, um, the best place or the highest place, I should say. Um, so, so if, if Chick-fil-A signs were the real cause of this person getting anxious every time they saw them, you know, the reality is if, if it was the actual cause and effect, like Chick-fil-A's signs caused people to get anxious, if that was really what was going on, then, then what would happen is every time anyone saw a Chick-fil-A sign, they would get anxious, right? And that doesn't happen, right? Chick-fil-A signs have nothing to do with anything, you know, when it comes to causing someone to feel emotion. The, the thing is, is a lot of times when, when a certain reaction happens within an individual, they project that reaction onto the external thing in their environment, okay? So if it doesn't cause every single person to have the exact same effect, then it's not a real cause and effect relationship. So for instance, if door handles don't cause everyone to get anxious, they don't cause anyone to get anxious, right? It's, it's a perception. Okay, so it's not a a root cause, quote unquote. So I hope that makes sense there, number one. Number two is when we're in a conversation with somebody and we feel a trigger come up or we find being in the presence of a certain person triggering, the question we need to ask ourselves is, does everyone feel that way, right? Like, and almost every single time you're gonna come to the conclusion, well, no, right? Not everyone 
reacts to your ex the way you do. A lot of people walk by your ex, don't even notice them, right? Don't, don't do anything for them, right? Um, where you might walk by them and might have an extremely negative, you know, a lot of a negative emotions come up. All that to say, the reason we're saying that the emotions come up is because you know, in reality, the emotions are stored in your system because at it, when they when you initially felt them, a lot of times you buried them down. That's the idea of suppression and repression. When we bury feelings in our body, eventually they have to come back up to be processed. It's just like when we push a beach ball down, it needs to come back up to the surface eventually. So a lot of times when we think we're handling a triggering person, instead of reacting to the energy that we're feeling and reacting to the emotion they're the emotion the energy in motion that we're feeling what we want to do instead is begin to look at it from a higher perspective and this is something that i was reading in um, frederick dotson's book prosperity consciousness today and he said something that just kind of blew my mind and you know basically he was saying that the word reaction and creation are anagrams for one another, meaning they're the same letters. And, and essentially they're two different ways of handling something, right? You know, being it, being in a more reactive state versus a creative state. We, if we begin to look at triggers from a more creative perspective and a higher perspective, a higher level of consciousness, if you will, as opposed to a reactive, we begin to understand that triggers are actually opportunities for us to release a lot of stuff that we've been carrying. And anyways, they're a gift most of the time. That doesn't mean that we ever allow someone to treat us poorly. We don't set good boundaries and there's not such things as toxic people. There really are. But if you're driving up to a party and you see someone's car and you start getting angry or anxious or whatever, very clearly that's a, a trigger that's happening for you and a sign that there's a potential for a release there. So... In the holiday times, a lot of times we can get very reactive because we're oftentimes we're around a lot of family and usually around our family, uh, we've, we've had just situations in our past that we've had to bury from time to time because we've, we've you know experienced certain situations or it wasn't appropriate to say something or all that stuff. So if you find yourself getting triggered, especially going into the holidays or just if you find triggering people altogether, first, again, understand, ask yourself, if, is this something that every single person experiences? Obviously, ask yourself if need if boundaries need to be set and we're not allowing anyone to treat us negatively. But if you just get triggered by the very presence of an individual, oftentimes, and they're not doing anything, oftentimes that's a good good indication that we need to do some releasing, right? We need to let go of a lot of stuff that's going on in here. Um, obviously, we go in depth in this in taking back control on, on going through the process of that. But it's, it's, it's a thing where even just bringing awareness to it can be very cathartic and moving from a reactive state to a creative state or, or really trying to bring a more creative energy into the trigger as opposed to a reactive energy is going to help you process it much better. So just want to, uh, you know, as we go into the holidays, again, talk about this idea of handling triggers or triggering people and really move into the idea of being more creative versus more reactive to them. So again, hope this was helpful. Again, I hope you found it of service as you move into the holidays. I hope you use this on someone that, you know, the next time you feel a triggering experience happen. And with that, uh, if you, again, if you're looking for that guidance, if you're looking for, uh, you know, that, if you're, if you're looking to break out of that OCD and anxiety loop, again, reach out over at restoredminds.com. Uh, contact us. You have some links down in the notes for you as well to access some of our material. And with that, I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Hey there. So if you enjoyed that video, we've linked up a few more videos that we think you'd find helpful as well. And if you have found this helpful, we'd really appreciate your support by liking and subscribing. And if you're looking for help and guidance, please check out restoredminds.com as we have several options for you to get started. See you guys soon.